Let's look at this one right here. It's number 36. This one comes from the general curriculum math subtest. It's the, the MTEL the MTEL 03 math subtest. This one is another elementary school uh, problem, but it's it's sort of upper elementary. It's a little harder. You're gonna see that the it looks harder, but uh, take a moment now, pause the video, same math, exact same math. Okay, take a moment, pause the video, read it to yourself. Go pause. Unpause, Boop. unpause, you unpaused it, all right? I always want to read it to yourself first before I, I take a look at it. You know, do that for yourself. And then when we, we read it together, you're, 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 you can get a lot more out of the video, okay, on the Pythagorean theorem. This is problem number two. It's going to be a little harder than the first one, but it's going to use the same principles, okay? Circle this diagram. Now, what do we have here? I'm just looking at the diagram. And just by looking at it, I think I'm going to enlarge it. My eyes are so bad, I need to enlarge this stuff. I see this rectangular prism. And, and I also see what looks like, I guess in the problem it says here, a ribbon. So this ribbon is, is moving across this, uh, the page here. So I guess uh, I'll start with that. I see this rectangular prism. I know the rectangular prism is made up of rectangles. Uh, or uh, some sort of rectangle or, or square, some sort of aspect. And, and then I also know that rectangles and rectangular prisms, they all meet at 90 degrees. Is that right? So everything here is some sort of 90 degree angle, which is, which is good to know. This is always good information to, to know when you see a, a rectangular prism, that it's made up of rectangles and, and the inside angles there are 90. Okay, let's go a little further. A gift box. Oh, we're, we're dealing with a gift box. Hmm, I, I can see that. I can see that gift box. And it has dimensions of X by Y by Z. Okay. X, X by Y by Z. And then it says a decorative ribbon is wrapped across the diagonals. I like that word diagonals of the box as shown above. Which of the following expressions represents the approximate length of the ribbons? Okay. So that diagonal word is really important. And I'm going to start here with uh, the... The, the, this shape, and I'm going to highlight. I'm going to highlight some shapes here that I see. First of all, I see here. There's a square here. There's a square, and this square is made up of two right triangles. Who sees that? Who sees that? There's a square made up of two right triangles. So you know what? I'm going to rewrite just like this, and I'm going to put my 90 degrees here. Now it's got a base here. It's got a base of y. And it's got a height of Z. Who sees that? Who sees that? Yeah. And that actual ribbon piece, that actual ribbon piece, or the diagonal of that ribbon there. Let me let me get a different color. That diagonal, the ribbon. Uh, I guess that would be our diagonal, or, or I guess we'll call this uh, our our D here. That's the diagonal there. So the length of this ribbon is on that diagonal or hypotenuse. Who sees that? Who sees that? Yeah. So the length of this ribbon here, this, this diagonal ribbon, I guess we could do uh, y squared plus z squared. Uh, and, and the sum of that would get us to uh, uh, d squared. Is that right? Let me draw that a little clearer. I want to make sure I get this right. I also want to take a peek back at the actual problem. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. It's just thinking about it. I want to make sure my answers match up closer to what we have. So I'm just thinking about this here. So the, the diagonal or hypotenuse of this right triangle could be represented as this side squared plus this side squared is equal to our D squared. So I'll just write that down here. Uh, our, our D squared, our diagonal squared is, uh, I don't need the parentheses there. We could say that's going to be e our D squared is equal to our Y squared plus our, our Z squared. Give me a thumbs up, yeah? But we just want to find out what D is, the hypotenuse, the length of that ribbon snippet. So I guess I could take the square root of both sides, and we get that this diagonal, this, this particular diagonal, right, is equal to the square root of y squared plus z squared. Who agrees? Who agrees with me here? Kind of, sort of, kind of, sort of, sort of, kind of. Okay, so let's just say right now, hypothetically, let's leave that alone. That's one of the sides. That's that's this measurement here. Let's do the other one. 
get the other ribbon. And then we got to remember that whatever we have, we ha we're going to have to double it because I have a D here, a diagonal here, as well as a diagonal here. But let's do this other one for this other rectangle. Now I'm going to pull out this other rectangle here. And just so I can visualize it, there's a, there's a 90 degree angle there. Now this one has a base of X, right? This corresponds to this side here. And it's got a height here of, uh, let's see, this is Y, Y, so that's got to be Y there. So I guess we could represent this diagonal, um, this, this side right here, I'll just call this C right now, just to, so we don't confuse it, that that C or diagonal hypotenuse, however you want to think about it, that C there, so we'll call it C squared is equal to A squared or X squared plus Y squared. Is that right? So we have this side here squared plus this side here squared equals the hypotenuse or that diagonal line squared. Now, team, I'm doing the same math here to think about this problem, but, but I'll just continue it out. This diagonal C, if we take the square root of both sides, that diagonal C is equal to the square root of X squared plus Y squared. All right, now let me pull out here a little bit. All right, so if I'm doing this right, it looks like we've got a ribbon and we've got, we've got this, we've got a couple sections of the ribbon here. Uh, we got this ribbon here. Let me get the right color. We got this ribbon and we got this ribbon. They're both the same length. So I'm gonna do here two. We got two lengths of, uh, of, of this diagonal, which we said was the, the square root of y squared plus uh, uh, z squared, right? So we got, we got two of those. And we also have, we also have uh, two of the other ribbons, this one right here. And that one's each one of those is equal to uh, the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we got we got this diagonal here plus this diagonal here, and we got two of those. So we got this plus this, this plus this, this side plus this side, and we have two of each. So guess what? We just came up with our expression that represents the length of this shape. Let's look at answer choice C. This is the length of the first diagonal right here, right? This is the, uh, let me match it up with the colors because I if the colors might help some teachers. This is the length of that first diagonal. This is the length of that second diagonal. So we take the first diagonal plus the second diagonal and then we're gonna double it because this ribbon goes all the way across. Okay, now, Here's what this problem does. It takes this basic idea of the Pythagorean theorem and it makes it harder, not just in the diagram, but also in the answer choices. And you're gonna notice that this looks a lot different. These answer choices look a lot different than uh, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, right? Or, or C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. It just looks different. And because it looks a little different, it's, it's just a little harder to interpret. But that's what makes this a sort of an upper elementary middle school problem, is that it's taking this basic idea, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and makes it look different so it feels different so you don't recognize it. Um, and also the, the answer choices here look very, very different too, but, but still the same math. All right, I'm going to put a smiley face on c there. Uh, the answer is C for this one. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. This spring, Go Academy is turning all the workshops into webinars. This is designed to help teachers continue studying and getting ready for their exams and stay at home at a safe distance. These classes are gonna be covering the same material as a regular workshop. We're going to do them in seven hours, and they're held on Saturdays and Sundays in the morning from 7 to 10.30 on Saturday and Sunday. These classes are geared for teachers that are going to be studying April and taking their tests late April, May, and June. And we'll also be doing webinars throughout the summer. I encourage you to check out a webinar. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful.